age, I'm a believer that we can still put some weight on you all. And it'll only um, help you guys get peaked and ready to perform when puberty does set in fully and then we can just kind of unleash full training plans on you all. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. On the bright side, yeah, this music here became my only lifeline. Think I'm going crazy, I'm not in my right mind. No. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another day in the life of the Murph Squad. Man, it's another beautiful sunny day. Too bad we're in quarantine. Hey, we're about to have a pretty exciting call here in just a few minutes. I have a good friend of mine, Heath Evans, who's going to FaceTime us and talk to us a little bit about some skills, some training, some stuff that we can be doing, we, the boys, can be doing to help improve their athletic ability. Heath is a former NFL fullback. He also played at Auburn. That's how I got to meet him when I was there, when Lois and I were cheerleaders and he was playing football. We got to become friends, really more acquaintances than friends, I guess, but we were friendly to each other. And then when he finished playing football, we actually worked out a little bit together. He started working out in the student act, which is where the students worked out. He stopped working out in the athletic dorm. Later to come to find out, I think he was doing it because of all the pretty girls. He was tired of working out with football players all the time. But anyways, we started working out a little bit as he was getting ready for the combine and just kind of became a little bit better friends. So honestly, we really haven't talked a whole lot since then. Um, a little bit when he was in the NFL, but now the last probably two or three years, we've been really talking more and grown that friendship and become even better friends. And so I was talking to him about Micah and Colin and Gavin and just saying, you know what, they're getting older. They want to be athletes. Uh, they want to play football. They want to play at the next level. So what are some things that he knows from all his experience? What can we do to be helping them to grow and get stronger and faster and just improve? And so we were talking and so we decided to set up a talk today. So he's going to FaceTime in just a few minutes and we're going to get some tips, some advice from him and start working with him a little bit on just getting the boys ready to get a little program together, start doing some skills and some training so that they can improve and hopefully maximize the talents and abilities that God has given them. So thanks for hopping in. Again, guys, if you have not, please subscribe to the channel. That would really mean a lot to us. And if you find value or get anything out of it, man, make sure you comment in the section and share it with somebody else. That would really, really mean a lot to us as a family. All right, guys. Well, we're going to get ready for the call and we'll see you in just a minute. There he is. Good morning, crew. What's, What's up? up, Heath? You guys good? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's do this. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to let you guys ask me questions. And then I'm going to believe God's going to give me great wisdom to pour into you young athletes where you can take it and go be the beast that God's called y'all to be. All right? All right. Sounds great. Jesus. You know it all, and the truth is, I know nothing. You have given me wisdom, you've given me experience, you've given me some practical application that I know works, but I also know that there is a divine, supernatural ability for you to set knowledge into people's minds that transforms them. And so we know we're dealing with athletics, but athletics is a part of your kingdom, and uh, ultimately, these gifts and talents have been given to glorify you. So, would you take my gifts and talents and however you see fit, proportionally give it to these young men so they can take it and run with it and fulfill all the good works that you have for each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, well, you guys don't, y'all have never really introduced yourselves to Heath. So, why don't you introduce yourselves to Heath? Tell him. Your age and what sports you like to play? Um, I'm oldest. I'm Micah Jr. I'm 13 and football's my favorite sport. Micah Jr. I've seen you on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Micah Jr. Who's next? Colin. I'm Colin. I'm 12. Uh, my favorite sport is either baseball or soccer. I'm, I was, here's my baseball story. I played one year when I was eight. I was scared of the ball, and 
didn't want to play again. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, hitting, hitting people and getting hit by people didn't bother me, but that baseball scared the best out of me. So, uh, Colin, you, you, you're tougher than I am. My, my youngest, what do we got? Uh, my name is Gavin. I am nine, and my favorite sport is football. So we got a couple, couple football players, and then Colin. We got uh, uh, soccer and baseball. All right. Um, well, here's the good thing: if I had all three of you here in LA with me, or in Florida with, if I was there with you guys, and we added in a 15-year-old girl soccer player and a 16-year-old girl volleyball player and a 10-year-old um, male golfer, I pretty much trained you guys all the same except for the weight load that we have on your body. So athletics, I don't care if you're playing tennis or golf, the same functionality that it takes to really be a dominant hockey player is, is really the same functionality that it takes to be a dominant tennis player. Now, as you guys get older and you get college scholarships, you go on to fulfill your athletic dreams, you'll have coaches that will break down small issues in critique form and advance your training somewhat. And there's a time and a place for that. Now's not that time. Now's the time to build some fundamental strength and balance and explosive power that will transition into really whatever you want to do, but also at the same time teach you how to work hard. So if athletics doesn't pan out for you, you've still learned how to work hard to go be a, a great accountant. You've learned to work hard to go be a great dad. You've learned to work hard and discipline yourself to be a great school teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is that you guys end up being. So everything I push and press, I believe that athletics, if we're training right, and we're pushing ourselves the way that I believe God tells us to push ourselves, then these life lessons of training will help us be the men that we're called to be for Jesus, but they'll also help us be the men that we're, we're called to be for our families and our employers, um, or the men we're called to be for our employees if we have a bunch of people working under us one day. So these principles aren't just for athletics and they're not just to make you a better football player or a better soccer player they're to make us the men that I think God's called us to be period the end and so some of the foundational stuff that I'm always going to talk about is going to be accountability setting and making a plan like people don't plan to fail they fail to plan so a plan just isn't in your head. A plan is something that's written out. So when your dad gets up to teach the kids or to teach a group of men, the Holy Spirit's cast a division in his head, and then he sits down and works it out on paper, and then he gets all the kinks out, and then it's, and then it's finalized where he's got a written-down structure plan of how he is going to try to deliver the Word of God accurately to the people he's in charge of or has influence over. A workout plan is really the same. God, give me great wisdom. <laughs> what do I need to do? All right, and again, for most young athletes, it's always gonna be the same in my book. I teach you how to work hard, teach you how to create accountability in your life, and then teach you how to set a plan that works for you. And that plan is always gonna be shifting. I was reading Ephesians 5 today, and I was looking at the notes that I had written last time that I was in Ephesians. And I'm thinking, wow, my God, you're always growing me so much. I'm always getting more out of even stuff that I've read a hundred times. And that's kind of how athletes are too. We're always learning more. We always got to shift and change and critique things. For now, that's me and your dad's kind of job and opportunity to do. And you guys just to kind of suck in and absorb all the information. So, yeah, how, how old are you again, buddy? Nine. Okay, so we, we got 13, 12, and 9, right? Yes, sir. When, as males, we're into full puberty, it is impossible if we're sleeping and eating right, it is impossible to overtrain the male body once we start puberty. God made the, the male body, like, indestructible. And if we take care of it through sleeping and eating, and, and I would add holy living, I can 
train you guys six hours a day, and and we can do that every day, five to six days a week, till you're 28 probably. I'm actually proving that right now with an athlete that I'm working with in Nashville, Tennessee that wants to be a D1 basketball player. Comes from a family of means, and so he's homeschooled, and he literally has about a five and a half to six hour a day training regimen, and he's doing great. Making massive gains, he's getting better every day, every week, every month, but he sleeps perfectly, he stays on schedule, his diet is flawless, and so we can work, work, work his body. Uh, at y'all's age, I'm a believer that we can still put some weight on you all, and it'll only help you guys get peaked and ready to perform when puberty does set in fully, and then we can just kind of unleash full training plans on you all. But for people that are going to be watching this on video, take a kid boxer, and you don't put him in the ring to spar until he's 13, and then you have some South American boxer that's been in the ring sparring since he was six years old. There has been development on that chin. There's been development on his fist. There's been development even on the pounding that his head is able to take proportionally compared to someone who's never been hit. It's the same thing with weights. When we're a six-year-old boxer is getting hit by another six-year-old boxer, it's like this. Like, there's no impact. And then a nine-year-old boxer is, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit harder. And then I'm not going to tell you what it looks like for the 12-year-old boxer. But football is the same way. Athletics is the same way. We have to not evolution like people teach. That's the most idiotic, absurd theory in the world. But our bodies evolve based on the stress and pressure that we put under them or put them put them under. And so, um, if you guys have small dumbbells lightweight is fine i'm not saying because you're not in puberty that you can't use weights i started working out with weights when i was eight years old i'm six feet tall i'm 260 plus pounds you know it didn't stunt my growth at all there's no science that says that it does there's just people that have read too many bad books and say that oh if you do this it'll stunt your growth michael hearn my workout partner and, and one of my best friends the jokers 6'3", 275 pounds, was working out at seven or eight years old like I was with much heavier weights than I was, and weights don't stunt our growth. I, I actually believe that it might speed the process up of, of developing us. That being said, we move slow. I want to take two things to dive into on this phone conversation. We play sports on, on one leg. We, we don't play on two feet. So in football, two feet on the ground, you're not going anywhere fast. When we sprint, one ball, the foot's hitting the ground at the time. We're always in these different awkward athletic positions, and so therefore, I believe we should train in kind of unilateral position. We should train in a position where we're constantly having to produce strength and power and stamina and balance in a single leg position. Your dad already knows I believe in a lot of lunges. I believe in a lot of single leg squats. I believe in a lot of single leg plyometrics. So there's a lot of stuff that you guys will see. If, you know, Mike Jr. when you play around on Instagram with athletes doing crazy stuff. A lot of the crazy stuff you see will never transfer to the sport that people are trying to play. Some of the ladder drills that are out there, so many different things. I always ask myself, when do you ever do this in your sport? And the answer is never. People get bored with my training plans because they're repetitive. People also get massive results off my training plans because they're repetitive. The stuff that I preach, we do over and over and over and over and over again. I prove my point all week by this. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, every single day in practice, they're gonna throw routes on air. No defense, no offensive line, no running back. They're literally just gonna throw the ball on air with their wide receiver. They're gonna run the perfect route. Tom Brady's gonna take the perfect drop back. He's gonna plant his feet perfectly, and then he's going to unleash the ball on time, on rhythm, day in, day out, over and over and over again. Why? Because the fundamentals matter. And the best that have ever done anything from Tiger Woods to Jack Nicklaus in golf to Mia Hamm and the elite female soccer players, they never skip a day of fundamentals, and they do it over and over and over again. Do you guys know who Bruce Lee is? Yeah. You heard yeah. that name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Bruce Lee said he wasn't scared of the guy that, that, that knew 10,000 kicks. Yeah. He was scared to death of the guy that had thrown one kick 10,000 times. Because he knew the efficiency of that one kick is what would be damning in a fight. But the guy that spent a whole bunch of time doing a whole bunch of other really cool stuff, he might be good at a few things, but he's not going to be great at anything. So good will never be great ever, 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 ever. The foundations of what we do, I'll warn you in advance, like the stuff that I will start you guys on now, we'll be doing four years from now. The stuff that I started doing when I was 14, I'm, I'm still doing now. Michael Hearn, you know, your dad can tell you who he is. He has dominated the bodybuilding and strength space and fitness space for 35 years, literally 35 years. He's 51 years old. He is way stronger than me, looks way better than me. He is one of the strongest human beings ever, period, the end. Every single chest day, he's going to start with incline bench. Every single day for the last 35 years. Incline bench, incline bench, incline bench. Who has one of the best chests in the world? Michael Hurt. People ask him, how do you get that chest? He tells them, incline bench, incline bench, incline bench. What do people do? Flies, flat bench, and all their stupid stuff they see on Instagram. The best in the world master the foundational principles of everything. And then when they get to the elite level, then they add in the tricks that will help them gain that extra little little bit of stuff. As I continue to talk with your dad, the stuff that I'm going to have you guys doing is a lot of single leg jumps, a lot of single leg squats, and then a lot of sprints. Because yeah. those three things will transfer to every sport. As we get through this 30 day, um, and you guys can have access to more weights and different things, then we can add stuff in. But what you guys need to focus on, what's your vision, so why certain super athletes never develop into what they could be is because they never cast a true, clear vision and plan of where they're going. And so that's first and foremost. I will help you guys and your dad do just that about what are the basics, what are the things that we're going to do every single day? What are the things that we're going to kind of hang our hat on that, that are going to make a difference in us athletically? And we're going to do those things. The second thing is you guys have to create some accountability around the house. Every single day we're going to check things off. Did I, did I get my running in? Did I get my core work in? Um, did I get my strength training in? Did I get my plyometrics in? However that looks, I'm not going to make those charts and graphs for you. You guys have to do it just like I make my own. And then every night before you go to bed, you go in your mirror or wherever you have it taped up. Maybe it's uh, somewhere as a family, you guys tape it up together. The best thing that you guys got going for you is you got three brothers. And you got a dad that absolutely adores you and loves you. And he's willing to help you guys put in this work. So set up your systems of checks where at the end of every day you get to be like, ah, I got in my water. Okay, good. I ate the stuff that I was supposed to eat. Check. Okay, I, I did my speed work. Check. Okay, I had my quiet time. Check. So every single day, you guys get to a point where you're having to look yourself in the mirror and say, did I accomplish everything that I could accomplish to maximize the gifts and talents that God's given me? Because every single one of you have a calling on your life. Ephesians 2 says that there's good works that God has planned for, for all of us. We got to get to a point where every day at the end of the day, we get to check off, okay, I got this done. I got this done. Now, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, there's a lot of days I got to look myself in the mirror at the end of the night and like, man, I fell short. I fell short on being intentional with Ava and Naomi. I fell short on my water intake. I fell short on that extra time that I wanted to get in the Word. I didn't get it done because I spent too much time on Instagram. Be honest with yourself, but have checks and balances that always make you be accountable with yourself and accountable to others because... Setting a vision and setting a plan, and then setting checks and balances with accountability one-on-one -on -one with yourself in a check sheet, but also accountability with your brothers and your mom and your dad will give you structure that's going to allow you guys to dominate life. Because if you get in patterns now of creating vision as well as accountability in every area of your life, I believe you three boys will rule the world. I teach Ava and Naomi the same thing because y'all are growing up in a culture where people can't discipline themselves and they're setting their own standard and our standards don't work. Jesus' standards always work. The start of how we get there as men is we have godly vision, 
You know, and listen, athletics can be godly vision. It's part of your giftedness. The, the, the reason you guys are on this call is because there's something in you that wants to be better. God gave you that. There's nothing good in us apart from God. Period. The end. I believe all this stuff is aligning to make you guys be the men that you're called to be. So your, your two things is what's the vision? What do y'all want to chase? You know, what do you want to be? Let's, let's, let's figure that out. And then what are the forms of accountability that we're going to set up? And so when you guys get those plans, I want you all to, to do that individually. And I want you to do it first without your dad's help. And then go to your father and ask him for help. Of, hey, how can we better this? And then after you get those two things done, we can do another call like this. And I can give you some practical training tips of how you guys can get faster and stronger while you're on lockdown there at the house. And those things are easy. Very easy if you put in the work. All right. Sounds okay. great. All right. Hey, boys, you, y'all, y'all got any questions or anything? I was gonna ask how to like get like quicker, but then he said uh, for next time. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Hey, so we'll get to that. Y'all can knock out your homework today, and your dad can text me tonight, and then we can hop on another call literally tomorrow. I love your dad. Your dad's been a massive encouragement to me in a very tough season of life. You guys have a stud dad. There's always gonna be this friction between kids and, and moms and dads it's 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 our sinful nature <laughs> it's, that's why god tells us so many times throughout scriptures to to honor our parents to obey them because it's part of a practice if if we can learn to obey and trust your dad it'll be that much easier for you guys to to learn to obey and trust your your heavenly daddy who knows all and is once he's got all the answers for your life y'all just knock this out have your dad text me when the three of you guys are done. We'll hop on another quick call tomorrow, and I'll give you those simple uh, drills to start doing in the backyard. Whatever limited access we have to space and weights, we'll get it done. Those are very, very easy. To My do. pinky, right. Gavin. What's <laughs> the <a> problem? <laughs> I didn't Gavin, know you it. squish his pinky? <laughs> yeah, on accident. <laughs> hey. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Can you see the scar on that thumb? Yeah. So in 09, our first game with the Saints in our Super Bowl year, a face mask caught that thumb. My skin ripped open completely. Needless to say, that thumb was jacked up for about eight weeks. <laughs> anyway, all right, you guys are awesome. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to go squat myself, so get your homework done. Ask your dad, hey, how can we, how can we make these two things better? Because here's the thing, your dad knows y'all better than you know yourselves right now and so he's going to have some really keen insight on how to help you guys achieve what you're what you're looking to do all right so trust him get that done and then have your dad text me back and then we'll go we'll go step two awesome sounds great heath love you brother appreciate your time all right, man. see you guys y'all have a great day all right bye heath bye 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 so we took some time after our call with heath and we wrote down some goals and um, we're waiting to get back to him so we can talk to him again. All right, so what goals did y'all come up with? We did goals for like our whole life and then we did goals that we want to do like, every day. Not really goals, but like a checklist of what we want to do every day. For that, I want to run, for me, I want to run half mile uh, like five days a week. I want to pray at least once, drink a full bottle of water, do some sort of workout and practice running routes and work on my hands for football. Okay, so what kind of vision did you have or goals for the future? I wanted to get a scholarship to Auburn University. Uh, I, wanted, I want to make the middle school track team. I want to be able to run a 630 mile by the end of 2020. I want to be an NFL running back or wide receiver, whichever one. Um, and then last, I want to put God first in all my decisions. All right, sounds awesome. All right, Micah. All right, I said um, for like, this is like, it's a goal, but it's like kind of like recent. So in the next eight months, I want to try to increase my bench by 35 pounds, uh, drop my mile to a 515, uh, increase my vertical. Um, I want to start varsity junior year of high school for football. Um, I want to play college football. And eighth grade, I want to drop my show run under nine seconds. I want to drop my 400 meter to a minute. I want to improve my group strength and worth ethic. Um, work on agility. I'm playing the NFL.
All right, what are some daily tasks to help you uh, kind of get to those goals? I forgot to write that down. Your accountability stuff? Yeah. What, what are some things that you've been doing? I did uh, drink two bottles of water every day. I did it for like a week and then kind of dropped it, forgot about it. I uh, do a workout almost every day. That's about it. All right, and then uh, Gavin? Mine is for goal, goals for life is become a professional football player, uh, become a good Christian, play football at Auburn, get the Heisman Trophy, run one of the fastest 40 times, and then here's another one, uh, get better at jumping and work, working out one, working out once every day, pray once every day, and drink a bottle of water every day. All right, so that was your vision and kind of the accountability stuff that to try to help you just kind of get, get to those goals, so that's good stuff. All right, so we took a little time to come up with those after our uh, talk with Heath. And so yeah, now the next phase was uh, we're gonna get with, back with Heath and kind of start implementing some skills and drills that he has while we're in quarantine. And then obviously some of those will change as we can get back into a gym, at least for Mike. And Mike is old enough to go to a to an actual gym, uh, the gyms that we've been going to Colin and Gavin are, they say they're too young, which kind of stinks, but I guess we'll have to wait for a little bit before they can actually start lifting uh, weights in a gym gym. I mean, we have some, a little bit of weights here, but we'll wait for that. So good job, guys. So now we'll get back with Heath. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah.